Hello, everybody, and welcome to this fixed webinar on the subject of market model typography. Um, we have an excellent panel, um, Matt Bumstead uh, from Bloomberg, we have Mark Batute from Six Swiss and Elliott Banks from BMLL. So we have representation from a trading venue, from a financial information provider, and from an analytics technology firm. So we can look forward to a very well-rounded, thoughtful and educational presentation. Uh, before we get going, um, a few housekeeping points, if I may. Firstly, a recording of this will be made available on demand at the FIX virtual conference, which is taking place, of course, on the 18th of September. So if you or your colleagues you know, wish to see this again or have not seen this before, we should see it then, that's the place to do it. We'll be taking questions at the end of the presentation. If you have a question, there are two ways you can raise it. One is that during the Q&A session at the end, you can use the raise hand feature, which you'll find on your Zoom facility, or you can actually post a question on Zoom itself. Um, and you can do that anytime you like. So please do that if you have a question. We'll be delighted to help answer that for you. And finally, uh, for any media in attendance on the call, please be reminded that we have a quote checking policy and uh, Chatham House rules apply. So uh, any questions about that, please direct those to the program office. So we'll be delighted to help you. Let's get going with a little bit of an introduction on what MMT actually is, what it's for, why it's used, and so on. So let's think about what the problem is we're trying to solve. You know, the, the problem space we're talking about is, is basically trade reporting or post-trade transparency, to use MIFID words. And the particular issue we have is that there are many, many ways to trade. There are many ways to publish trades. And over the many years that we've been doing this, we've evolved a multitude of ways of basically flagging the same thing in many different ways. So different trading venues, different investment firms have, have just come up with their own um, methods of doing this. This, of course, is confusing, and you only have to go and use um, you know, a Bloomberg QR screen or something similar provided by other vendors to see the results of that. The result of it, uh, from a practitioner perspective, is that it's actually quite hard to really see what's going on in the market unless you happen to have a PhD in trade flags. So the MMT basically got created uh, initially by a collection of um, trading venues to try and sort this out. And what it basically does is it comes up with a single taxonomy for trades in a, in a post-trade transparency perspective, um, which basically breaks a trade down into its constituent parts, if you assume, and this could be where it's traded, how it's traded, to some extent when it's traded. And by doing so, it makes it much cleaner and, and much more accurate to be able to determine when you look at a trade on a, on a data vendor screen or a feed, what it's actually come from, or what it actually means. It comes, so it's basically it's a data standard, which does that. It's also a set of rules for usage, because this is a complicated space, as we know, and the rules are as important as the standard itself. So those are the things, the main, main elements of what MMT is all about. It's owned by the fixed trust, so that means that there is intellectual property security. So it's free to use and always will be. Um, it's the same uh, legal structure that we use for the fixed protocol and other fixed standards. It was originally created by a trading venues, as I said. It's now been moved under fixed governance. Um, it has a steering committee. It has a technical committee. These are members by um, trading venues, by um, investment firms, by data vendors. So very, very broad representation on those committees. We basically make sure it's um, fully fit for purpose. Fully engaged in um, recent initiatives on, for example, consolidated tape. You may see I'm co-chair of one of the groups that, um, that is looking at consolidated tape. Um, and the MMT um, committee, technical committee have been very, very involved throughout that process as well to make sure that the recommendations coming out of that group are being fed into the MMT structure. So it's not a static standard, it's an evolving standard, it's changing to meet the needs of the industry as things develop. So hopefully that will give you um, a little bit of a, an introduction as to what we're talking about. Um, I would like to hand it over to the panelists now who will be able to give you this in far more detail and give you a, a really good quality view of what MMT is all about and how people are using it. Jim, thanks a lot for this comprehensive and insightful introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, we'll start uh, with uh, the very first question to the audience. Uh, so question number one, how much do you use MMT codes as part of your workflow? And so the audience has now th roughly 30 seconds uh, to post the answer online. So up to you. Right, I understand uh, the results are more or less final. So we've got a mixed picture, which is not completely surprising. And we understand, first of all, I would see that as encouraging that the majority use, uh, at least from time to time, the MMT and knows about MMT. 
And logically, for those uh, who do not use MT for the time being, we believe there is presumably some uh, communication and education effort to be made in the future. Okay, so let's consider this simple use case. Uh, we plot uh, on the slide here all the intraday prices for Deutsche Telekom, a, a German a blue chip. And we've got uh, data points from all available sources, from regulated markets, MTF, OTC, and SI trade reports. And we see, of course, those unpleasant spikes, and they refer to trade reports uh, under deferred publication regime. And the point or the purpose of MMT and standardized trade flag is to allow the user, to allow you, to filter the desired uh, data points uh, according to unambiguous criteria. So if you would like to uh, produce a VWAP price using or relying solely on leaked prices, so MMT would support that. It would also support the filtering out of all undesired data points. So briefly summarize, trade flags inform you about important aspects of post-trade transparency. And what is also important to us is that good data gets produced at the source. So then the data can flow throughout the market data value chain in a purely mechanical way without any need of local reinterpretation or local remapping. So the second question to the audience is, do you see great value in the display distribution of standardized trade flags such as MMT ones? Again, audience has about 30 seconds to post their answer online. Okay, so this is a very encouraging statement that uh, the vast majority of the audience uh, see that the standardization of trade flags brings great value in the display and distribution of standardized trade flags versus a multitude of proprietary ones. So, so it's very encouraging statements by the audience. And it's very encouraging for all the fixed members of the different working groups uh, that have been working on that particular topic for quite a couple of years. What we need to bear in mind with this slide is that the fixed MMT data standard is an efficient operational solution for fulfilling the trade flagging requirements set in MIFID, MIFI, and in particular in RTS 1 and 2. And we rely on the proven fixed governance to maintain MMT as a useful, neutral, and evolutive standard. Okay, post-trade transparency uh, typically informs on whether price information is valid or not, what type of liquidity pooling mechanism uh, is applied for an execution, whether interaction between buyers and sellers is of either bilateral or multilateral nature, what level of pre-trade transparency is available before execution, and whether the publication of the trade details uh, has been made uh, immediately or whether there is any kind of deferral uh, of the trade details. So on this slide, uh, we have a, a real world uh, example or use case of a trade message incorporating the full MMT logic. So this comes from the MDDX data feed from the Swiss Stock Exchange. And we can see that on this particular uh, execution message, you can uh, read from the MMT component that this trade was executed on a central limit order book. It was during the opening auction phase. It's a plain vanilla execution. There was full pre-trade transparency. It's a valid trade, not a cancellation. There was an algorithmic flag on one of the two incoming orders and that the publication was immediate. And if you would like to understand more from the MMT data standard, the explanation on how to use it, and also the cross-referencing uh, towards the relevant pieces of regulation, you can find everything in a very transparent manner, manner in, on the FIX website. So I do uh, encourage you to have a closer look at the comprehensive documentation available on the FIX website. So question number three, back uh, to the audience. FIX MMT standardized set of trade flags enable valuable efficiency gains in market data processing. Would you share this view? Up to you, 30 seconds to post your answer.
So the poll results, so encouraging again, that's more than half of the respondents uh, claim that they see great value in reducing the workload by using a standardized straight flag and reducing also the risk of misinterpretation of the data. About 36% see the, the potential of data processing cost reduction, but a claim that the MMT usage is still too limited across the industry for achieving full potential. And that once again brings me to the statement that uh, we need to improve education and communication alongside our MMT effort. So at that stage, happy to hand over the floor to my fellow co-chair of the MMT Technical Committee, Matt Bumstead from Bloomberg, who will provide more insights from the perspective of a leading data vendor. Thank you, Mark. Hello, everybody. Um, as Mark mentioned, I'm a fellow co-chair along with Mark of the MMT Technical Committee. Um, as you heard earlier, MMT came about um, to accommodate regulator concerns around adequate transparency and post-trade execution reports, coupled with desire from the trading venues and the market data vendors that any mandated or normalized flags also sufficiently described on venue execution reports. As MMT has been built by the industry for the industry, it provides a credible way in which to complement bespoke and granular venue specific trade type descriptions with a normalized description of the same, where the need for a standardized description of that type of trade has been identified. And this normalized representation benefits everyone, including market operators, trade reporting service providers, the market data vendors and trade aggregators, the consumers of the post-trade data, and indeed the financial market data regulators. So MMT has been designed to gradually describe all the relevant facets of a trade within levels, beginning with the fundamental market mechanism that had facilitated the trade, defined at level one of MMT. An example market mechanism would be a dark book matching mechanism. MMT then describes additional facets of the trade, such as the trading mode in which the trade had been executed within the earlier defined market mechanism. MMT also accommodates additional important attributes of a trade, including those mandated by the Regulatory Technical Standards, abbreviated to RTS. So that would be RTS1 for equities and equity-like instruments and RTS2 for non-equity instruments. And MMT also brings logical structures to these flags, including indications of which flags could or could not potentially coincide on a trade execution report. Indeed, all trade flags defined within a specific MMT level or sublevel are considered to be mutually exclusive. This diagram illustrates how MMT accommodates all of the mandatory trade flags outlined within RTS1 for equities and equity-like instruments. Each flag has been accommodated within the most appropriate level or element of the MMT structure. The same process has been applied to the trade flags stipulated within RTS2 for non-equities, but we don't illustrate how those have been accommodated on this slide. The FIX MMT steering and technical committees, in collaboration with the EMEA governance team and other related FIX working groups, such as the consolidated tech working groups, maintain an open dialogue with the European Securities and Markets Authority, ESMA. The committees have submitted questions and proposed official Q&As to ESMA. We've also received answers and clarifications from ESMA, and we continue to assist ESMA with its desire to better understand the MMT trade flagging standard and its role in improving post-trade transparency. As you can see here from these snippets from literature published by ESMA, the regulator recognizes the work of FIX and the benefits of MMT in supporting the post-trade transparency requirements that have been outlined in the applicable regulations. The MMT standard has been formally adopted by the trading venues listed on screen, several of whom are also active members of the FIX, MMT steering and technical committees responsible for helping to form the standard. Additional trading venues may also support MMT or are planning to introduce support for MMT in the future. As you can see here, most of the major market data vendors and trade analytics providers also support MMT. And many of the organizations, again, that you see listed on this slide have been active participants in the FIX MMT steering and technical committees. I'll now briefly go through some insight into how the market data vendors accommodate, publish and display the MMT trade flags. So we'll start here with a screenshot of the quote recap or QR function on the Bloomberg terminal, through which one can see the intraday theoretical and actual execution data. In this example, you can see several lit order book trades, LB, dark order book trade, EB, 
and the periodic auction on demand order book trades PA with the MMT flags explicitly listed in the MMT column of the time and sales display. MMT is displayed alongside the venue specific trade condition codes in the CON column and the Bloomberg proprietary standard condition codes in the BSCC column. Similarly, shown on screen here is a spliced representation of a new trade report that's been published on Bloomberg's consolidated market data feed, otherwise known as BPipe. If a BPipe subscriber chooses to do so, they can receive the MMT trade flags on the trade reports where the trading venue has made them available to Bloomberg. In this example, Bloomberg is using the display codes representation of MMT. Other services may use the efficient encoding representation, and you'll see some examples of this on subsequent slides. The Ion Markets or Fidesa display service also allows the user to see trades described in terms of the MMT trade flags, as illustrated on the current screen grab of the Fidesa Time and Sales facility. The next slide provides a visual representation of how trades are published on the market data feed from six financial information. Highlighted on the right here is a clear indication of the MMT trade flags on each trade report. And in this case, the efficient encoding representation of MMT has been used. Similarly, the Refinitiv display and data feed services also support MMT. The Electron feed provides the efficient encoding representation of MMT within the MMT underscore class field whilst the Icon Desktop provides the display representation of MMT on the time and sales display. And at this point, we'd like to invite you to participate in question number four, audience poll. How important is trade condition code normalization, for example, MMT, to you? So very encouraging results. Um, it's very clear that normalized trade types are very important or somewhat important to most participants on this call. So hopefully MMT will play a part in that. And with that, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Elliot. Thank you, Matt, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, for those who, who don't know, BML, BML uh, the company I work for, we, we are a data and analytics company. So we take different uh, historical data from different venues across equities in, in Europe and the US. We harmonize and normalize that data and provide analytics on top. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the use cases we've used MMT for and some of our, our products that we've produced. And, and in particular, I'll talk a little bit about the Plato Metrics portal that we helped develop and how we used MMT codes to help facilitate that and, and how important it was to have access to the, those, those trade classifications. The purpose of Plato Metrics was we worked on behalf of the Plato Partnership to build a portal that, that's open to all participants to help understand and, and remove some of the complexity of European liquidity landscape. And in particular, look at classification of, of different trades into, into a few simple buckets. So here you can see uh, on the screen is, is that, that classification on Plato Metrics for the market as a whole, classifying different liquidity into, into four different buckets, which is very easy and quick for someone to come in and analyze at a, at a sort of macro scale what's going on in the market and in particular i'll draw attention to the bilateral and the non-addressable buckets on that screen so bilateral addressable here we mean it's still price forming um, but it's not necessarily open to all participants so so think of things like systematic internalizers now where mmt flags came in it was all about being able to, to map that appropriately so in that example um, we might have OTC trades that are flagged with B and C, which means they are for a benchmark purpose, and that would go straight in the, into that bilateral bucket. However, any trades we saw which were flagged with sort of MP, MPFT, so not part of the price forming process, we put in this non-addressable bucket of liquidity. So very quickly, our quants and data scientists, when they built out this product, because certainly on the venues that had MMT normalization, because it was all there and those codes are all ready to go, it, was, it, made, it made our data science life, scientists' life much easier to deal with. And now this becomes even more important if we go on to the next slide, um, where rather than looking at the market as a whole, the tool we produced also allows you to look at individual securities. And what we can do is, is what users of our tool use this for is to look at how these different buckets have changed over time and see how what's happening to the market, how much non-addressable is there versus lift addressable or, or dark address, addressable. And again, all our code was made much, much easier by the fact that we had this normalization that we were able to use, we were able to pull in through our data lake, 
pull out the MMT clothes and make that classification nice and simple. You can actually see how, when we've expanded out, we've seen how these different buckets of liquidity have changed over time for, in this case, HSBC around, around March time, when obviously during COVID there was, a, there was a large increase of liquidity. You can see how actually less of that increases on, on the lit addressable versus sort of non-addressable and bilateral addressable. But the key point here was that we, we took those MP, uh, MPFT flags, TNCP, the different MMT codes we get, and by taking it on different stocks on the, on the venues that do use it, there was much less business logic we had to write to, compared to venues where we didn't have, have MMT codes. So really, the, the, the key point from, from an analytics provider and, and as someone, and, and the sort of thing we see our clients regularly wanting to do, it's about easy access to, to these different flags. So at BMLL, we, we take them and we all make sure that they are fully accessible to any of our users, either using our, our data science platform, which we produce, or through the our, our data analytics, which we, which we produce. Um, and we will always make sure we pass them through. The other type of thing a lot of our customers use us as a product for and, and where MMT codes come in is looking at the order book itself. So here we've got an example of a consolidated EBBO across different venues. But by taking that and combining it in, as Mark showed earlier, overlaying that with different trades that, that make sense by and pulling out particular MMT flags, it becomes very easy to do sort of post-trade analysis, historical analysis, to just get the trades of interest that matter for you. And when our users and when our customers have those MMT flags available, it's a lot easier for them to actually access the trades they're interested in and pull out that information. And it makes our own normalization scheme as much simpler because there's consistent logic across different venues to, to use. So in summary, um, then from, a, from an analytics provider perspective, access to consistent harmonized LMT codes makes it much simpler to normalize and aggregate data to, to therefore draw insight and be able to make real decisions off there. And that's all really because these LMT codes provide an easy way to, to access this data. So if we go on to the next slide, I think I'll hand back to Jim for a final summary. That's great. Thanks very much, Elliot. And, and indeed, thank you, Matt and Mark, as well. That was, that was very helpful indeed. So just, just to finish off with a few things. Firstly, obviously, we've got the points on the slide here. Just a recap of what MMT is all about. Operational solution for trade flagging requirements. Not just those raised by ESMA, but uh, certainly includes and supports those raised by ESMA. It's freely used. It can be freely used without any licensing and always will be. That comes back to the IP point I made earlier. It's a collaborative initiative. So it's something if you want to get involved in shaping MMT, then um, please do contact either the panelist or uh, the program office um, to do so. And of course, we have questions um, coming up in a second as well. Just a couple of things for myself. I just wanted to wrap up a few points I'd taken from this. Firstly, a couple of points on the presentations. Very important to note the dialogue with ESMA on the usage of MMT. Um, you know, it was mentioned as, as part of the RTS consultation process. Um, there's an ongoing process regard, uh, consultation regarding consolidated tape. Um, there seems to be a very open communication channel there, which is working very nicely. So not only are ESMA very aware of what MMT is all about and what the MMT committees are trying to do, but um, there is a good two-way dialogue in terms of really trying to understand what ESMA are trying to achieve with their trade flags and making sure MMT can deliver on that. So that's very, very good. I think looking at Elliot's presentation, it was clear how important the data standardization piece is when it comes to using and being able to create tools such as uh, the one that Elliot was showing. I mean, you can have the, the best technology in the world, but if the data going in is no good and it is, uh, it's impossible to clean up uh, because it's simply just data missing, then it, it's just hopeless. You, you, you're, you're fighting a losing battle. I and mean, we've seen this throughout our, our, our history. Um, and the introduction and adoption of MMT has, uh, without question, made uh, the production and usage of these tools much more prevalent, much better than before. I think one other thing, and I was interested in looking at um, in Matt's presentation, um, the screenshot of um, actually all, all the data vendor screens, all the one thing in common, which is that the MMC representation, when I first looked at it, I thought, oh, there's, there's a lot there. That seems to be quite complicated. You know, the old cond column is quite simple, and these new columns, the MMT column, is quite complicated. And it suddenly sort of occurred to me that it's not just about standardization. It's also about richness of data. There's more content there. There's more information than has historically been provided. So when you sign up to use the MMT, you're not just saying, I will provide the data in a standardized way. You're actually saying, I will provide the data. 
That may be more data than firms have been used to providing, but that's a generally a good thing for the industry. I mean, I know, for example, things like the Algo flag was on there, um, certain other flags very, very clearly denoted, which historically they haven't been at all. It's not just they haven't been flagged consistently, they haven't been flagged at all. So that's a, that's a big step forward as well. Just to pick up on a couple of things from the, the polls. So thank you very much to um, all the participants for responding to the polls. Usage, um, obviously very encouraging to see that we've got 30 three percent or thereabouts, I think it was, using the MMT, a decent number not using it, which is obviously less good. I think the non-awareness one was the one that we clearly need to work on. So the fact that there is a gap in awareness of MMT is something that we need to focus on from an educational perspective, so we'll take that away. Good to see strong support for standardization. Good to see that people regard this as an important topic. Um, and interesting to see on that things like data processing costs, again, very encouraging that half of you think it's, um, it, it's saving money, which is fantastic. I think it's a very sensible point made by um, a large number of you as well to say that it's not been adopted widely enough and clearly adoption is uh, something we also need to basically make sure it's pushed through as we go through. So those are my kind of thoughts on uh, where we've got to with this. Um, I think it would be good now to open up to Q&A and I do see we have some questions that have been raised on the forum. So. Let's go for what have we got here? There's one that came in actually towards the beginning of the presentation, actually. The original trading venues that created the MMT. Um, Mark and Matt, you showed us a list of venues who adopted MMT. Is that the same as the original set or have some joined? Uh, no, it's not the same as the original set. There's, um, in fact, it was actually MMT was originally uh, set up by the Federation of European Securities Exchanges by inviting uh, some of the MTF operators and the market data vendors to collaborate on re in reviewing um, the CESA original recommendations around trade flagging and how to respond to those. And I think the emphasis there was that not only to try and accommodate or provide feedback to those trade flags, but make sure that they work for on-venue executions as well. I think it's, as you'll notice from the slide, not every member firm of VESI has yet implemented the um, trade flags, but we're very confident that they will at some point in the near future. Yeah, Mark ma speaking, j just to complete, it's correct that one or two large market operators that have still not yet implemented MMT, but uh, we, we know they are working on that, that uh, we expect that during one or the, the, the next uh, data feed release, uh, there is a great likelihood that you will find MMT codes as well where they are missing today. Brilliant, thank you very much. We've got another question on here. Probably one there that you might want to have a bit, of a bit of a look at. If MMT provides a standardized set of fields, why as an analytics provider do you have a secondary categorization? It's a really interesting question. I, th I, think, I think it's all about use case here. I think, I think the clear thing is that MMT provides the, the, the granular level of information that if you need to drill down into an individual trade, that, that's really, really useful. I think at the same time, um, if you're trying to make more macro statements or, or look um, at sort of more tr more trends rather than drilling into an individual trade, then we that's where we started to build out that sort of bilateral and and, and dark and non addressable classification. But I think the key point was that MMT provides you that granular level of detail you need to be able to then classify it however you want and however in, wh in whatever way you want to then do analytics. Very good, thank you very much indeed. Got a question that's come in, a uh, very very important relevant question. This one, um, the perception of the relative adoption of MMT between equities and fixed income. Um, I think it's probably worthy of note that um, you know the, the list of trading venues shown there was predominantly equities. I think most of the examples shown there, if not all of them, were, were of, um, of equities as well. Um, MMT for non-equity product, you know, completion of the standard and indeed adoption. What, do you, what were your thoughts on that? Mark speaking. So first of all, the MMT data model is suitable to all asset classes that fall under MIFID jurisdiction. Then in terms of adoption, it's a bit different. Uh, we are mindful that um, there is quite a broad acceptance of MMT in the equity and equity-like space. And we know that generally speaking, the level of transparency in the fixed income market is much lower uh, irrespective of MMT or not in the fixed income matter. But definitely, and it's also part of this communication and education effort that needs to be done across the industry, uh, the MMT uh, data model is applicable also to the fixed income space. 
Thank you very much indeed. Are there any other questions from any of the participants on the call? I do have one question actually myself, which is um, again it's a sort of adopt adoption question, and um, it's a it's a similar, if you like, to the equity fixed income question. It's one of geography, um, and clearly this was born out of a um, out of a European exchange group. Um, it's got very much a European membership, European um, trying to solve what we consider to be perhaps European problems. Is there a view, a, a move in MMT circles to try and um, encourage adoption and usage and participation um, outside Europe? I think um, the, we built the MMT standard to be as generic as possible, and that, that was with a mind to the point of view that it might be adopted outside of Europe as well. Clearly, some of the trade flag, flags are born out of European regulations and so may not have relevance. But if you look at the MMT structure, you will see that there are more generic ways of indicating a negotiated trade, for example. So there's really nothing to stop MMT being adopted outside of Europe. Um, in fact, we'd encourage people to participate in the steering and or technical committees. And if there's anything that needs implementing an MMT to better describe types of trades outside of Europe, then there's no reason why that couldn't be accommodated. Thank you. Okay, if there are no more questions, I'll just open it one last time if anybody's got anything else they want to raise. If not, then thank you very much, Mark, Matt, Elliot, uh, for your excellent presentation and the work that's gone into that. That was very interesting indeed. Um, a reminder to everybody that this will be um, available uh, at the conference on the 18th of uh, September. So if you want to um, recap any of the material we've covered, then please make use of that facility. And um, thank you very much for your participation. Thank you, panelists. And thank you for Events Team for putting this all together. And finally, um, just like to remind you that there will be a final um, webinar, next, uh, Fixinar next Thursday on Fixed Latest. And Fix Latest will be presented by Hannah Klein from the Technical Committee, and he'll be explaining about the new generation of the protocol that moves away from versioning. Um, so we look forward to seeing you there. And also, just as a final um, item, on the conference, so please don't forget to register, we will be holding a Fix Lab where you'll be able to chat informally with the MMT uh, team who were on the call today and ask some questions directly. Thank you for attending and good afternoon. <laughs>